Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Navigating Information webinar. Today, my colleague Glenn Benedict is going to be looking at the kinds of information, what's available, where to find it, and how to use it. Take it away, Glenn. Hello. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Glenn Benedict. I'm a librarian here at uh, UDC. And yesterday, we we're going to talk about different types of information, um, where you can get it, how you would use it. Um, and yeah, so let us go forward. Uh, so today, um, I want to start off first off um, by talking about primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. These are some terms you may have heard your professors use before. So I want to kind of just briefly go over those because those are going to tie into the, the, the majority of what we're going to be talking about, which is types of information. So within each type, I'm going to talk about um, what formats they're available in, um, how long, like sort of what, what, what is the time investment for you as a reader or a listener or somebody who is taking in that information, um, the length of time it takes to create that information. And that's important sometimes because some information uh, formats take a long time to produce and therefore they are not necessarily the most up to date, but they may have a more comprehensive view or 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 looking at things in the longer term. Um, the detail, what, how much detail um, is packed into these information formats. Uh, some examples and then how you could access them. Um, and we're looking at these specifically as a UDC student. And at the end, we'll have time for questions. So first I wanna start by, by talking about primary, secondary and tertiary sources. And these are things you may have heard your professors talk about um, when sort of looking at uh, you know, a project or a paper or a report, um, you know, they may specify you have to use a certain number of primary versus secondary and tertiary sources. So primary sources, um, those are firsthand or contemporary reports. Um, so these are things, um, this is information that is gathered firsthand, that is gathered um, by somebody who was there, somebody who witnessed so if you think about witness statements, those are primary sources. So um, you would go to things like letters, diaries, memoirs, photographs. Um, a lot of what we think of as historical research um, is in those uh, formats. Interviews. Um, so if, you're, if, um, if you have a person who was present for an event or witnessed something or lived through a certain time period, uh, interviews are... Um, uh, a way we might see this, um, get that information. And also um, contemporary newspaper articles um, will a lot of times give you the information that was known at the time about certain events. And so that's, um, those are all very important things to keep in mind. So those are primary sources. Secondary sources, um, they are after the fact, they provide commentary, interpretation, analysis, uh, and a curation of of information. So uh, books that are written after the fact that, you know, are maybe examine a historical era or a, a time frame or a person's life. Um, these are on, um, so magazine and academic journal articles uh, written after the fact, those are, those are all secondary sources. And tertiary sources are sort of collections of primary and secondary sources. So your textbooks, encyclopedias, um, those are things that collect a lot of information and then distill it down. If you kind of think about um, these sources, the primary sources, those are sort of your most, uh, they're most potent, but they're also kind of the most limited in their points of view because it's one person's perspective or it's one vantage point and it's an immediate vantage point. Secondary and tertiary sources allow you to take, we'll take those primary sources and then put them into a context. Um, you know, so a secondary source might look at uh, information from multiple primary sources and then condense it down to show the bigger picture of what was happening. So those are just things to keep in mind. And I'll kind of bring those up as we go into talking about um, different other uh, ways that information is organized. So, you know, this is a library webinar. Um, so if you're thinking about information in the library, 
probably the first thing you think of are books. Um, another term you may have heard is monographs. Monographs, um, generally nowadays, kind of are used interchangeably with books. It's monographs is not a term that's really used all that much, especially outside of library or academic circles. Uh, but monographs are generally used to refer to uh, a source, usually, you know, a book or it could be a pamphlet or, you know, something something smaller than a book um, that's on one subject. So it covers one subject and goes really into detail. Uh, that's a monograph. But in general, if you hear monographs can also be used generally to refer to books in general. So books uh, available in physical form, they're also available as ebooks. Um, the access you may have to ebooks um, can depend. Uh, if again, if you're a UDC student, you're probably familiar with um, Brightwave, which has um, uh, sort of uh, uh, you know a proprietary um, uh, for a uh, system for of you know. Uh, providing uh, access to that book, but only to you and doesn't allow you to do things like make copies or um, download uh, books or uh, the book or the chapters uh, in it. So length, generally with the books, we're talking about, you know, hundreds of pages. Uh, these can take years to write and publish. And with, in terms of detail, they can be very broad, but within chapters, they can be, you know, still contain very deep analysis. Um, so again, it does depend on book to book, but in general, um, you know, they can cover a one subject in very broad spectrum or they can get, you know, very narrow. Um, so, you know, books are available in all sorts of, uh, uh, formats, nonfiction, textbooks, novels, novels may be something, um, when you're thinking about primary sources, especially, uh, so a novel being a work of fiction may not necessarily be a primary source as in terms of telling you what a fictional character thinks or does, or even what the author thinks or does. But a lot of times it can be very revealing about, um, you know, sort of methods of thought, um, what was sort of going on in the zeitgeist in a particular era that, that they may not have been aware of at the time. So, um, if you think about sort of the novels of Jane Austen, they may not necessarily, you know, they're not necessarily a primary source for life during that time period, but they can be used as a primary source in terms of what were people thinking about? What were some of the ideas that were going through? What were some of the uh, uh, societal concerns at the time? So you may not necessarily think of novels as a primary source, but many times they can be um, used as such um, as long as you're being, as long as you're aware of sort of how you're using them. Uh, graphic novels, technical manuals, again, all sorts of different ways of getting information to people. Um, you know, graphic novels are a way of organize, you know, they're not a genre. They could cover a lot of different genres, everything from, again, um, fiction to nonfiction to, um, if you think about something like mouse, uh, mouse is a, uh, you know, could be used as a primary source because it is a, uh, an interview. It is an interview between uh, a son talking to his father about the father's experience in the Holocaust. This happens to be illustrated with sort of anthropomorphic animals uh, to sort of illustrate um, the father's story. So ways you can access books, we have them available. Uh, you would check our UDC library catalog. You can also get them through our consortium loan service, our CLS and interlibrary loan. Um, you can request books there as well, both physical. And if you only need like one chapter or a section of a book, you can request um, a, uh, a digitization of a portion of a book um, through that service as well. So next up, we have uh, um, articles. You may um, most you may also hear things referred to as serials. Those would be things that are published in a regular manner. So if you think about uh, academic journals, popular magazines, newspapers, those are all examples of serials, and they contain um, articles within. And again, you have those in physical formats, although those are uh, increasingly rare. 
as the majority of um, article publishing has moved online and are uh, accessible through electronic databases. <coughs> In terms of length, we're looking at about you know five to 30 pages, roughly. It could be shorter, it might be longer, but generally, um, an article that you're going to find is going to be, um, uh, you know, much more uh, compact than what you would find in a book. Um, they, this, it's um, the publishing, the turnaround time on publishing is quicker than with book publishing. So the information contained in these articles is going to be more up to date. But again, because they are much more narrowly focused, they may lack context or they may be too granular. Uh, addition, uh, additionally, you may have um, uh, consequences or, you know, sort of future and long-term uh, trends that you may not notice um, if you're only looking at individual articles. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, for those, you can access those through our UDC A to C resource list, which is our databases. Um, if you're looking for a specific journal, uh, the best way to find that is through our UDC library catalog. And then the entry for that journal in our catalog will actually link you to um, one of several databases where you may find that journal collected. And again, um, you can request uh, articles through ILL. So another form of information, uh, data and statistics. Primarily, you're going to find these online, although uh, there are still some organizations, uh, especially government uh, institutions that do publish their statistics uh, in physical form. And in terms of uh, the, the time and the length, um, both to create the information and then to process the information as reader, it's going to vary depending on what you're looking at. Um, and again, there you can get a lot of detail in statistics and data, but um, you know you may have to do your own explanation or interpretation, or may go you may have to go to some of those secondary or tertiary sources to have the data put into a context that's usable for your project. So examples, um, census data. Uh, what a I was helping a student. I was looking at things like uh, incarceration rates for juveniles. Um, so that's an ex just as an example of data that I, I helped a student find once. And the CDC COVID data tracker again, another place you can go if you're looking for information um, uh, in data form. Uh, so places you can access uh, some of our uh, databases that we have through in our A to Z resource list. Um, that's what they specialize in. Rather than articles, uh, what they have is sort of raw data that you can sort of interact with in a variety of ways. We have one database called Social Tracker that uh, allows you to interact with census data and a lot of other government collected data in a visual manner by using, um, by overlaying that data over a map. And so you can kind of look and uh, examine how geography, um, how economic status and all sorts of other uh, variables impact uh, uh, some of the other data that's collected. Uh, again, organizations that collect and publish data, um, a lot of it's available on their websites. So if you kind of know what uh, organization is collecting the data, that makes it a little easier in terms of being able to find it. So another source of social media that people use um, and you may not think of it as a source of information, <laughs> you may not think of it as a source of good information, uh, is social media. Um, so format, you know, this is this is online, uh, you access it through social media platforms, websites, and apps. Uh, in general, the length of social media is going to be short, you know, short posts, short videos. Um, the, it, this is something that can be published immediately. So there's no, uh, there's no gatekeeper here in terms of having to get approval generally um, for social media information. Anyone can post, uh, can make posts um, and post it right away. So it's a good way of getting up to date and the most the information quickly. Mm -hmm. However, again, because there is no, there's no oversight, there's really no editorial, um, you know, gatekeeping. Uh, in terms of the, re the reliability and the validity of the information that you're getting 
may not be good. You may have people um, spreading misinformation or spreading uh, what's called uh, disinformation. Um, so either, you know, false information that is being uh, spread naively or on accident or, you know, uh, or disinformation, you know, people that are intentionally spreading false information. So again, be very uh, cautious, uh, be very be skeptical, be um, constantly evaluating your sources when you're looking at information from social media. Um, so in terms of the detail that you're getting, uh, you know, again, these are short posts. You may not be getting a lot of context for what, um, for the information you're getting over social media. And I think most of us are pretty familiar with um, uh, social media platforms. I picked some that you might not think of. So for example, TikTok, because the, uh, the barrier to entry on TikTok is much lower than on uh, you know, like a video sharing platform like YouTube, for example, it's a lot easier to, to share and spread information via TikTok um, than it necessarily is on, on another platform. So that's why I'm including TikTok in the social media as opposed, well, along with uh, X, formerly Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm also including sort of like microblogging like Tumblr or uh, sort of media review sites like Letterboxd and Goodreads, you know, on those platforms, you might be getting like longer essays, um, but you can also just get really short uh, posts or reviews or sort of like a, uh, you know, a collation of, you know, user ratings for different media, like, you know, in this case, uh, Letterboxd should be uh, movies, Goodreads would be books. Uh, so again, access, you, you would be getting that through um, online uh, websites and apps. Uh, reference sources. So these, again, these might be the other things you think of when you're thinking about going to the library. These are your dictionaries, encyclopedias, also, you know, Wikipedia, uh, I'm including here. So these, um, again, are available in physical form. They're available as ebooks, electronic databases. And some publishers of um, their information is basically available online. So think about something like, uh, you know, Merriam-Webster or other dictionary publishers have kind of their full databases available and open to the public online. Uh, and on the length of these, they can range anywhere from a paragraph to a couple pages, but in general, um, if remember, we talked about tertiary sources. These are really your tertiary sources, the most, the most tertiary of, uh, of sources. They really are condensing and um, distilling a lot of information into a very small, uh, into a very small volume. Um, and these can, so these can take a lot of time to create the initial entry, but then if you traditions may only need minor changes because once you have the information, you know, you can, there really isn't necessarily a need to update uh, a lot of these entries because, you know, they're dealing with things on such a, on such a big, uh, such a long timeline. Um, so you're getting, uh, within these reference materials, you're getting a very broad summary usually have a very specific topic. Uh, so these you can find through our catalog, through our A to Z resource list, and uh, you can also request them through CLS, ILL, and also find them online as well. And uh, so the last kind of category I wanna talk about is audio visual. So these, um, you know, this would be, um, so record, audio, recorded video um, that is available, um, you know, they're available in physical copy. Um, you can also get them online on electronic data through uh, some of our databases. Also, uh, streaming is kind of, um, especially in the last uh, five years or so, is the primary way of accessing this material. Uh, the length, again, varies. We're talking uh, the, it can be just a uh, quick sound clip. Uh, or it could be, you know, up to an hour or so. And again, the, the, um, you know, the, the amount of time it takes depends on the production. Uh, some, some of this material can be 
can get uh, out to people very quick. Sometimes it does take time for, for, um, for the production of this material to get out uh, to people. And the amount of detail you get from this, again, is going to vary depending on uh, the format um, of the audiovisual material. Um, audiovisual material can be your primary sources. If you, know, if you have a newscast, if you have a audio interview with somebody who is present for an event, um, that, uh, you know, home movies, all that kind of stuff, that's all going to be your primary sources. Uh, but you can also have some of those same types of uh, information you had uh, in some of the other formats presented in audio or audiovisual format. So video essays, audio books, um, news broadcasts, um, uh, documentaries, um, you know, share a lot of things in common with some of the other uh, information formats that we've talked about. So. These uh, available at our UDC A to Z resource list um, in our databases uh, through CLS, uh, you can request them through ILL. And again, they are available uh, primarily nowadays when we think of um, audiovisual material available through streaming platforms. Okay, Megan, do we have any questions? Thank you, Glenn, that was great. Taking a look at the chat. All right, not seeing anything come in. So I do want to thank everyone for attending today. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time. We are masters in helping you track down the information you need and trying to figure out what kind of information works where. So please don't hesitate to contact us either through our email, through our chat, through an appointment or in person at the reference desk. This session was recorded and will be posted to our YouTube page later today. Thank you for attending and thank you, Glenn. Yep, have a good day.